So today, uh, our assembly really is focusing on uh, the feast that we celebrated yesterday, um, and that was the feast of Corpus Christi. And I'm just going to take you through a few slides just to um, get us to reflect on what the whole purpose of Corpus Christi is about. Um, I've certainly got some memories of when I was first made my first Holy Communion um, and having to be in a procession as a result of Corpus Christi. So I'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. This Corpus Christi takes us right back to the Last Supper, which we celebrated in the week before um, the resurrection, the Easter Sunday. Um, we don't really celebrate the body of Christ, in a sense, at that time, simply because we were in a time of preparation for something which was initially quite tragic, the death of Jesus on the cross, um, which became a triumph with his resurrection. So now that we've got through the Easter period and we have celebrated um, Easter, Trin Ascension Thursday, Trinity Sunday, we now take focus our attention very much on the actual um, Last Supper again and what it means to us today as much as what it meant to the disciples. Um, so let's just have a look at the feast. Let's just start really thinking about your meals. Um, the Last Supper was a meal, a very special meal, um, but let's think about your special meals. Now, I don't know how many of you have been able to have over the last few months um, with lockdown. Um, but I want you to sort of close your eyes for a minute and think of some of those most special meals you've had, whether it is recently, over the last half term perhaps, or going back several years. And what I want you to really think about is when it was, who you were actually with, who was celebrating or eating with you, why were you eating together, what was the occasion, and perhaps you can even think about what food you were actually eating. And then around that, maybe you can think of some of the memories of that evening, perhaps some of the, the conversations that you had, maybe some of the, the jokes that might have been told, the reminiscences that people would have shared. So just try and call those memories to mind. And I want you to think how you felt around that me meal. Think about the quality of the food, the quality of the conversation, the company you were keeping. How did it make you feel to be there at that table? Because every meal, every gathering we have gives us some sort of nourishment. Obviously, there's the nourishment from the food itself, the vitamins and the minerals, the carbohydrates, the fats, the um, proteins and the vegetables you're getting. Very good for us, for our bodies and for our brains. But there's another aspect to that nourishment as well, and it's actually the bond we get by actually being together. So as I've just got on the slide here now, it is a strengthening of the relationships we have shared around that meal. The fact that we tell each other news, what's been going on in our lives. We retell uh, family or friendship memories that we have from weeks ago, months ago, years ago for some of us very many years ago um, and then we exchange ideas and we exchange opinions and we talk about the plans we have for the future the events we might have together so it's a really important part of nourishing the relationships we have if we cast our minds back to the last supper that also was a coming together of um, friends it was to celebrate a moment of history it was the community of the Jews were celebrating the feast of the Passover, that great event in their history when Jesus, when God was able to free his people from the slavery of the Egyptians. And they shared food and drink, bread and wine. And I have no doubt that the disciples and Jesus were sharing stories about what's been going on during the day, what happened later earlier on in the week, perhaps, um, you know, the tension that was building up in Jerusalem at the time. But there's also talk of the future. And Jesus himself spoke specifically about the future, about future meals that the disciples and further followers were going to have together. And he talked about taking, eating and drinking, and that this bread and wine that they'd be eating and drinking would no longer be just bread and wine. It'd be something quite special. In fact, it'd be his final gift to them, his body and blood and who told them to do it in memory of him. So let's go back to food for a minute, just simple bread and wine or the sort of food you'd be eating on a daily basis. Just think how important that is to sustain our bodies, the things that we might be doing during the course of the week. 
that helps um, to sustain us. We need that food, we need that nourishment. And if we don't have that, then it's very difficult for us to concentrate, for us to have that physical strength. And just as food, the physical food we eat on a daily basis sustains us, so does the body and blood of Christ in the form of the Eucharist sustain us. It allows us to care, to think of others, to show compassion, perhaps to be patient with the person you find so annoying. Um, and it helps us to stand up for where there are injustices, things that we know are wrong and unfair and unacceptable. And it's the food that we can get through the Eucharist, that strength that allows us to do those and do them well. So if we don't have Holy Communion, then it can become quite difficult to make those wise choices, to support and care for others. And as I said, to stand up for those injustices. It's difficult to persistently show compassion to other people, those who are less for fortunate than ourselves, and those who just test us just by the way they are, the way they speak, the, 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 the things they say. But then we've had the pandemic and we haven't been able to receive Holy Communion. So how is it we've been able to manage and sustain our faith? Well, the church has been able to demonstrate the importance of Holy Communion, even though we can't receive it, because it's allowed us through the streaming of masses, and you can actually visit many masses around the country um, during a Sunday morning, and attend mass, and you're able to reenact, be part of that reenactment of the Last Supper, and therefore you're doing it in the memory of Jesus. Remember what Jesus said, do this in memory of me. So by engaging and watching and listening to the readings, listening to the priest's homily, and responding to the bidden prayers, we will still be nourished so that we can live our lives as Jesus lived his. Remember he called us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Now the feast has been so important over the centuries that in many communities, uh, the churches will actually possess around their towns with a consecrated host in a monstrance. And there's some examples in those photographs there. And I certainly remember, I think I said at the beginning of the assembly, that just after I made my first Holy Communion at the age of seven, all of us had to get dressed in our finery again, and we joined our set procession on the Feast of Corpus Christi. Obviously, not many places will be able to do this at the moment. But the purpose of the whole of this celebration is to remind us that actually this is God's gift to us and that through receiving Jesus through the form of body, bread and wine, which is his body and blood, we are nourished and we can serve him well. Let us pray. We thank you for the spiritual food you have given us to nourish and sustain us in the form of your body and blood of your son who gave up his life for us. May we always use the strength we are given to serve others, bringing Jesus to all we encounter each day. And we ask this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So there we have it, the importance of being nourished and being healthy through that um, and being sustained through the trials and tribulations that we have to face on a daily basis. Some are very small, some are much more challenging. Um, but it's only through nourishment through prayer, nourishment through communion, that we can really do as God calls us, to be the best we possibly can be, to make those wise decisions. And so today, even if you haven't been able to receive Holy Communion for a while, just think of the things that you have heard and seen from other people, those people who are good role models of what it means to be a Christian, and take your nourishment from them. Let's make the sign of the cross together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.